a portion of today's episode is sponsored by, um, um, who's our sponsor? Oh, LGTstore.com. What's up, everybody? Listen, this is probably one of the most ambitious projects that I've taken on, and it's all thanks to Sam Prentice, whose shirt I'm representing. Now, it was originally called Wacky Racers, and now it's called Death Racers, and it's just a few days before the Midwest Rep Rap Festival, and I need to put together all of these parts. That was me just a few short days before Murph. I was scheduled to pilot a Death Racer style demolition derby vehicle at the Midwest Rep Rap Festival and I just hadn't had time to build it yet. You first saw these Death Racers at TCT in Birmingham because that's where Sam and I were running them around demolition derby style on the show floor. The idea is that you've got a boom at the back. When you push the boom over, you then decapitate the robot. Look at that, exactly, and now I'm dead. I'm so dead. you're dead. After TCT, I was actually a part of the Sanjay Mortimer Foundation event where we held a an auction and it was it was fantastic and Sam was there as well and he was able to provide some support for me not just support where he held me on his shoulders but support with the electronics and the power needed to make my racer go I just had to find a way to get it all home assembly really needed to happen right away so I started with the TPU tracks the motor mounts and the wheel assemblies unfortunately I wasn't able to finish things in time. Oh man, I mean, it, this is gonna be fun. So I did my best to pack up my parts and take them with me to Murph. You know, once at Murph, I found John of Tripod's Garage and I found Sam Prentice. Hello there. That's terrible. Hello there. Both John and Sam were able to help me get my racer all assembled. In fact, they, they did the majority of the work. And from there, from there, it was time to race. Wait, 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 wait. Go back a little bit. Yeah, 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 right there. Check it out. As you can see, my sneak attack resulted in my racer being taken out of the competition. Look at that track. Look at the wheel. I, I took myself out. What? My polymaker filament failed a bit. Perhaps it wasn't made with enough infill. My rider is very comfortably laying down and uh, my boom boom stick just rotates about 135 degrees. I told Joel to repr reprint his parts and he didn't. <laughs> he took the cheap way out and he tried to glue it all. <laughs> this box contains my racer. You see, at the Midwest Rep Rep Festival, my racer, now assembled thanks to John and Sam, couldn't fit in my luggage with all the stuff that I was given and had to bring home as well. Andrew at 3D Gloops said, no problem, you give it to us and we'll drive it to our shop, we'll package it up and we'll send it home to you. So look, here's my box of tools and spare parts. Here's my TPU tracks. There's my battery. Here's my controller. <laughs> here's my poor, poor racer. One of the things that Andrew told me, he said that they couldn't find the back to the remote right here. They did end up finding it, but he actually modeled one in my High Five Blue and put my logo on it. And sure enough, that's, a, that's an upgrade right there. That's awesome. Oh, and of course, it's a package from 3D Gloop. There's 3D Gloop. 3D Gloop actually played a massive part in my racer as succeeding as much as it did. And it's because some of the parts that I printed were in a PLA silk material, and as you know, and as I forgot, silk material doesn't really have the best layer adhesion properties, and so I utilized 3D Gloop to keep it together. So at Murph, I added a lot of 3D Gloop because the layers had started to delaminate and the perimeters started to separate, and I just, 
I needed a solid piece and it was 3D glued to the rescue. That's why that sticker's there. Wow. Also, apparently Sam Prentice is a fantastic 3D glued model. So where I went wrong, yeah, things went wrong and you're gonna find out how wrong in just a second. But for now, let's talk about something that's so, so right. The WAN hoodie from LTTstore.com. The WAN hoodie is stylish and functional and it offers you one Kanga pocket up front and seven very useful pockets all around the hoodie. Zipper up when you've got a chill and you want to stay warm. Zipper down when you're outside, the sun is shining and you want to let the breeze ride through. Hexagons and orange accents, I guess that means this hoodie is Prusa compatible. Honestly, this hoodie is super comfortable and I really enjoy wearing it. To get one for yourself, go to lttstore.com and look for WAN hoodie or just click the link down in the description. And now, back to the show. The parts were printed on the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon in PLA. It was printed fast, but that wasn't the issue. I used defaults in the Bamboo Lab slicer and it defaults to 10% infill grid and two perimeters. Now, grid and fill aside, because the infill isn't really going to attribute itself to a lot of strength, the, the two perimeters, that's not enough. Especially if we're talking about these parts going into a robot that combat style is gonna demolition derby into each other. So since Murph, I've reprinted the parts, but this time I've chosen some slightly better materials with more perimeters and more infill. So I utilized Protopasta's carbon fiber PLA for some of the parts and it turned out great. And then I also utilized some carbon fiber nylon with extra perimeters and more, more infill to also turn out great. These parts are going to be incredibly strong. Wow. Well, as you saw in the video there, the, the axle, the wheel actually sheared from the axle and the way that these are modeled, the axle is actually attached to one of the wheel portions. And my hope is that the carbon fiber nylon is gonna have enough layer adhesion so those axles aren't going to get sheared off from the force of knocking into each other. So I'm hoping that the carbon fiber nylon has a much better layer adhesion than the, well, the silk PLA for sure, but the carbon fiber PLA as well. So for these new parts, here we go. Uh, carbon fiber nylon for the wheels that have the axles attached because I'm hoping that the layer adhesion there is going to be better. I've got the two brackets that hold everything in CFPLA. I've got motor mounts in CFPLA. I've got the wheels that don't attach to the axles or that I don't have the axles attached in carbon fiber PLA. And I've got the two gears that go on the motors that's in CF nylon because those are gonna be interfacing with the CF nylon gears. So we should be good to go. Let's get these new parts on the racer. Let's see if it works. So this is in PLA here. This is with more infill and look at that. It just sheared that right off. And so that's where I'm hoping, I'm really, really hoping that the carbon fiber nylon does a better job. That's where all the gloop was right there. Look at it. Just brittle. Chewing into the CF nylon takes a little effort. Now to put the tracks on. Okay, at this point, I've got one side done. You, uh, you saw me do it. You saw how the sausage was made. So what I'm gonna do is just get the other one done real quick because anytime I have to do it for a camera, it takes four times as long. The next time you see me, both sides should be done. We should have ourselves a functioning racer. Well, we're back inside and that was a bunch of fun with this death racer out in the gravel. I had a bunch of, <laughs> I couldn't tell you. This was a bunch of fun. I think that there are areas where this can improve. I think where the motor gear interfaces with the wheel. I think that with printed parts, you're, you're, you're really playing with fire at that point. And I think if there was a different gearing style in order to transfer this motor motion to this mo the, the wheel motion, I think that'd be good. Uh, but obviously with 3D printing, that's the great part. If you want to augment or upgrade or change things, you just print the new parts. <laughs> this was so much fun. Sam Prentice, the man, the myth, the legend. Thank you so much for involving me in this. And if you 
are interested, if anybody out there is interested in printing one of these themselves, I'll put a link down in the description. Sam's got some great stuff for you. The model's available. The, um, the bill of materials is available. I think you'll have a lot of fun. Also, big thanks to John over at Tripods Garage for helping me get my racer race ready. Uh, he was essential. His booth was right next to Sam's and he was essential and not just helping get my racer ready, but providing the charge for the battery, even though uh, I didn't race much. That battery had a full charge when I started and that's because of John. Thanks, man. Uh, last, I want to give a big thanks over to 3D Gloop. They were across the, the walkway from Sam's booth where I was assembling the racer and where John was from Tripods Garage. And honestly, 3D Gloop is the only thing that kept it from just not falling apart under its own weight. So 3D Gloop, I salute you, and that sticker stays. Like I said, if you want to print one of your own, hit that link in the description. If you're looking for more radio-controlled, robotic, demolition derby-style mayhem, well, you just might see it. Details soon. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Death, Death Racers! Racers! And as always, I high five.